In today's video, we're going to be talking about NS Cache, a pretty convenient way to boost the performance and snappiness of your application. We'll walk through a real world example, but before we do so, smash that like button down below, hit subscribe if you're new here, and let's dig into Xcode. So we're going to create a brand new project here. We can leverage NS Cache with SwiftUI or UIKit, any framework for that matter. But in today's video, we're going to be using UIKit. Let me create call this project cache example we'll go ahead and continue toss a project wherever you'd like and first things first let's pick a simulator to run this guy on when we do write some code and need to run it we'll pick the 13 pro max let me go ahead and also expand my window here give this guy a run I believe I've got a simulator open already and let's talk about NS cache so as the name implies it allows you to cache uh, items that are particularly expensive to initialize or create over and over and it almost uh, behaves identically to a dictionary. So for example, let's say you download an image and you want to cache it for the app session duration, right? You can toss it into a dictionary. But what happens when your app starts to use too much memory and iOS, the OS is going to send you a memory warning notification. You then need to manually clear out your caches and basically get your app to behave uh, because you have the risk of it being terminated. So NS Cache actually takes care of that latter half for you. It allows your cache elements to be evicted, to be cleaned up in an intelligent way, and the system will do it for you. So let's do an example. What we're gonna do is we are going to have a image provider, which will download an image. We're gonna be caching that image, and whenever we go to another view controller, we'll go ahead and uh, either read from the cache or we're gonna download the image. So let's go ahead and create a image provider object here. And we're also going to create another view controller. So let me go ahead and create one more file. It's going to be a Cocoa Touch class. We're going to subclass a view controller. And we're going to go ahead and create a second VC just like that. Now, before we jump into the controller here, where we're basically just going to read from the image provider, let's actually talk about the image provider first, since this is where our caching layer will be. So we'll go ahead and create a image provider object and let's try to spell things correctly. And this guy is going to have a shared instance member on it since we're going to treat it as if it's a singleton. We'll go ahead and privatize the initializer and we're going to bring in a function to fetch the image. So we're going to go ahead and say fetch image and we're actually going to make this function public. So we'll say func fetch image. And this guy is going to more or less have a callback, which will hand back a image. And this image is going to be optional in case for some reason we don't have it. And finally, what we're gonna do is actually, of course, implement this. So let me just line break this to make it a little more legible. Now inside of here, what we're going to do is I've taken the liberty of copying a URL that I'll paste at a moment, which will give us a random image every time so we can truly see this caching layer in practice. And basically it's this unsplash API URL. You can copy it verbatim with a size at the end here, and it'll give you a random image every time. Once we create said URL, we're gonna go ahead and create a task. Pretty standard stuff at this point. We'll create a URL session shared, and we're gonna perform a data task, passing in that URL, have a callback, which will give us some data. We'll ignore this response. We'll take care of this error as well. We're going to unwrap said data just like that. And we're also going to validate that the error is in fact nil. Go ahead and return. And now that we've got all this good to go, we're going to want to resume this. And in here, we'll basically create the image and return it, assuming we have data. So we're going to say main async since we're going to now be interacting with UI kits APIs. So we're going to say UI image data data and we want to make sure we don't forget to import UI kit up here otherwise it's going to yell at me just like so and now that we've got this guy here we can call the callback and pass it in so I went through this bit a little quickly since it's not relevant really to the point of today's video so in this case we also want to spell this correctly and pass it back nil we never want to not call the completion handler 
Now let's talk about the caching layer. So now whenever this function is hit, we're gonna go and fetch the image. And that's kind of redundant, kind of unnecessary, absolutely no reason to do so. So we're gonna introduce NSCache. So how do we go ahead and do that? So we don't wanna be reading from the cache directly at the layer where we want the data. We want this class to intelligently, uh, when fetch is called, check in our cache if the object we are looking for exists. And if it does, return it. So we're gonna say that that our cache is going to be NS cache. And NS cache basically takes in two uh, type arguments here. The first one being, uh, what is the key type? Well, you're gonna use a string. And the second one being, uh, what are we actually caching? So we're actually caching a UI image. So we can go ahead and do that and we'll see this error go away, hopefully momentarily. Bear with it, let's see why it's yelling at me. So let's see, NS cache requires a string to be a class type, so we can actually use as NS string. And this will go away, hopefully, momentarily, just like so. So NS cache, I believe, is still written in Objective C. So if I go ahead and jump in here, you'll notice that uh, it is not in fact Objective C, but it is uh, a NS object. So under the hood, I suspect that this is still coming from Objective C. But now that we have this cache object defined, what we're gonna do up here when we call this API is we're gonna say guard let, or we can say if let rather, image in our cache is, and we're gonna say, give me an object for a key. And the key we're gonna use here is image. And we're gonna say, make sure that this is a UI image. And if we do get a cached image back, we can simply return so we don't continue down below. And we can hit the callback, passing back said image. So if you look at the API, it looks very similar to a dictionary. And it's gonna be yelling at me because we are basically casting it down to a UI image, which is uh, unnecessary because we actually uh, set up here that this guy is going to hold images as the elements that we will cache. So we can actually drop that. That's why we have our warning here. And that's basically all there is to it. Now, where do we actually cache? The place we can cache is once we come down here and actually have said image, we can go ahead and add to the cache. One other really important call out for NS cache that you get for free versus using a dictionary is that it is thread safe. So instead of having to lock between various uh, queues, background or main, you can go ahead and write to it directly from any context and the cache object will take care of locking the reading and writing. So we're gonna go ahead and say set an object for a key. This will be our image. And the important bit here is to have a consistent key. So we're, we've been super creative and called it image. So I'm just gonna copy and paste it. And just like that, we should be good to go. Let's see why this is yelling at me. So let's see, we're coalescing because this image here is in fact, uh, I guess, nullable. So what we'll do here is we're gonna say card let image. Make sure we actually have this before we continue. And uh, let's spell this correctly. And if we don't have an image, we can once again call the callback, passing back nil. So just like that, we should see that error go away. And for the sake of this actually working and being able to see what's going on, we're gonna add some prints. We're gonna say using cache here. And in this case, we're gonna go ahead and add a print and we're gonna say fetching image, just like that. And we should be good to go to use this. So let's actually jump into our main view controller here. I'm gonna create a button and this button is going to go ahead and open up the uh, other view controller. So we're just gonna create this and add it like so. I'm not gonna spend too much time on setting it up. We'll set a title of tap me and this is going to be for normal. Let me also go ahead and set a frame on this guy. It'll be 0, 0, 250. And we're gonna say button.center is view.center. And of course we want a actual selector for this. So we'll say did tab button here. And we're gonna present the other view controller. So we'll say second VC. And of course present said view controller modally just like that. Let's connect this button to that selector. So we'll say add target self. We're gonna say did tab button and our event is going to be touch up inside. If you go ahead and give this a run, we should now see a button in the center of our view controller. So let's make sure it shows up. I believe the color is white. So let's go ahead and fix that real quick. So maybe I'll do a background color of system blue so we can always see it. 
go ahead and give that a try once more. There is our button. And I tap it and we get this other controller. We can't quite see it because there's no background color. So let's come in here and set a background color and our image view. So we'll say system background, and that's not how you spell system background. We're gonna do system background color. Let's go ahead and add an image here. So we'll say private let image view is going to be our image view. And this is where we're going to, of course, assign our actual image once we get it from our fetcher. So we'll say image view, go ahead and return said image view. And inside of here, we'll do some minimum configuration. We're gonna use constraints to lay out this guy. So we'll set that property. We'll also set its content mode to scale aspect fill perhaps. And I'll also give it a background color. And that should be good to go. Let me actually make the secondary system background. Let's go ahead and add this and call it our image provider. So we'll go ahead and say, add this guy. And let's see, let's go ahead and constrain it. We'll say layout constraints, and we're gonna activate some constraints. And let's see what we wanna do. Let me just give it a fixed width and height since it'll save us some time. We'll perhaps go ahead and do 300 high and 300 wide. And we'll also go ahead and just center it both horizontally and vertically. So we'll say center x anchor is going to be constraints equal to view dot center x anchor. And lastly, we're gonna do the y anchor. Let's see if I can get away with just copy and pasting. Looks like I can, the dream of every programmer. And let's go ahead and give this a run. We haven't called that image provider yet, but let's make sure we see our image. We in fact do see this screen. I don't see the image. I'm assuming it's here and the color is blending in. Let's go ahead and actually call that function though. So we're gonna say image provider shared fetch image. We should get an image back. And we're gonna go ahead and say uh, weak self so we don't cause a memory leak. And inside here, we're gonna say dispatch queue main async self image view image will be image. Let's go ahead and give this a run and let's make sure that this is actually working. So I'm gonna clear out my console. We're gonna tap this and we expect to see the image being fetched and we also expect to see it assigned. So there is our image, came in a little slow. We definitely saw a delay there. Now the beauty of caching is when I come back to this, we should see it immediately because it's gonna read from our cache and that's exactly what it's doing. So first and foremost, it went and fetched our image and then secondly, it used it from our cache. So that's basically NS cache in a nutshell. Now the example here is quite trivial and of course, this is used in almost every single large scale performance application in one capacity or another, be it for images, be it for some other type of data. Some apps will use it for state restoration when you support multi-window on iPad, et cetera, et cetera. Now, one important good practice that I'll leave you with is don't ever hard code your keys like this um, unless you have you know, a very specific scenario where the key will never change. Presumably, if you have you know, images that you're fetching, you want this to be something reasonable, right? So generally what you want it to be is either the URL or some specific UUID or key that you can actually use to distinguish the things you are caching. And once again, NS cache, you can cache different kinds of elements. Your OS or the OS will take care of evicting things if memory pressure is too high without your app actually crashing. And finally, it is also thread safe. So that is NS Cache in a nutshell. That's all I've got for you guys today. Let me know in the comments down below if you've used NS Cache and if you don't, what you use for caching. And uh, if you haven't done so already, hit, hit that like button down below, hit subscribe, you guys know the drill. Go ahead and uh, follow on Twitter, connect on LinkedIn. I've always loved connecting with you guys. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch y'all on the next one.